In this video, we'll talk about creating non-void functions. And this is remarkably easy to do in Python. And I'll show you the template that we use. And I'll just write this as a comment, and then we'll implement the actual code. But we start by writing the keyword def, as in define. And then I'll write some things in angle brackets. They're just placeholders. We provide a function name, and this is any valid identifier. And then within parentheses, we put what are known as formal parameters. And then we have to end this line with a colon. So this line is called the header. And then we follow this with indented code. So I'll go over a bit here. And then there is the body of the function. So let's explain these terms a little bit more. When it comes to this function name, that's just simply an identifier, any valid identifier for the formal parameters. That's comma separated identifiers. And then the body is any number of indented statements. Finally, for a non-void function, we should also have that the last line of the body should be a return statement. And we'll see what a return statement is in just a bit. If a function doesn't take any arguments, then we don't put any of those formal parameters, but we still need the parentheses. We just don't put anything between them. OK, now let's give an example where we create one of our own functions. And let's base this off of a function you might see in math class. So let's consider the function maybe you would see in math, where you have a function f of x. And what it returns, or what it is equal to, is maybe 3 times x plus 7. Now, if we want to implement this in Python, we would write the keyword def. Then we give some valid identifier. So anything that would work for a variable name works for a function name. But let's just stick with f. Then we need parentheses and some identifier here for the argument or the formal parameter. And let's call it x, as we would in math class. But now we don't put equal. We put a colon. Hitting return, idle knows that, hey, now you have to give me the body of the function. And notice that we don't have the interactive prompt. It's waiting for more code. And let's simply do this. We need a return statement. So let's say what the function should return. And it returns 3 times x plus 7. We hit return once. And if we're done with the function, we could hit return again. And we get our interactive prompt back. And now the function is defined. It exists, and we're free to use it as we see fit. To demonstrate the use of the function, let's write its name, open parens, and then we provide the actual parameter. Let's make it the integer value 2. Put a note here that the actual parameter is the integer 2. So what happens is we provide the actual parameter when we call or invoke the function, this actual parameter is assigned to the formal parameter, and then the body of the code is executed. When we hit return, 2 is assigned to x, then we get 3 times 2 is 6 plus 7, and that's the value that this function returns. And let's try another one. Let's provide the float 0.0, .0 is the actual parameter this time. And now we get 7.0. And this shows that, well, we could provide an integer argument or a float argument. The function doesn't really care. And the actual argument could be an expression. Let's try this to make things a little bit more complicated. Let's say w is equal to 15.2. And now let's call that function f and say the argument now is w maybe minus 3.6. And let's divide that by 3.2. So the argument of the function is evaluated. We'd have the w minus 3.6. That expression's evaluated. 
That is then assigned to the formal parameter. The function calculates whatever it calculates. It returns that value, and then we divide that by 3.2, and there's the answer that we get. The function f doesn't have any side effects. It merely returns a value. Now let's write a variation of that function that returns the same value but has a side effect. So we'll call this function f1. It still takes a single argument and we'll call that x. But now let's calculate within the body of the function that same expression, 3 times x plus 7. But now we'll assign it to the identifier y. And then let's print x and also the value of this expression y and we might want to do this for debugging purposes maybe we're having problems with this function we want to make sure that the value of x is assigned properly and that y is being calculated properly this print statement is really a side effect and then we want this function to return the value of y the value of that expression Hitting return twice, we get the interactive prompt back. And let's say f1 with an argument of 2. Well, now we see one line of output that is from the print statement. That's 2 space and then 13. So that's telling us the value of x and then the value of that expression. Then the second line of output that we're seeing, that's really the return value of the function and it's the interactive environment that says, okay, when I evaluate an expression, if you're not assigning it to anything, I'm going to echo that back to you. But if we assign this to a variable, if we said z is equal to f1 of 2, and let's make this a more complicated expression, let's add to that 5.0. When we hit return, we still see the output from the print statement. We still see that side effect, but now we are not seeing the return value. Instead, F1 returned 13. That was added to 5.0, and we should see that Z then is 13 plus 5.0. So hopefully Z is 18.0, and indeed it is. Now let's create another function that's very similar to F1. And in this case, we'll call it f2. Still has a single argument that we'll call x. We'll still assign to y 3 times x plus 7. But now we'll return that value. And then we'll have the print statement. So we'll print x comma y. And there's our function. Let's try calling it as we did before, with an argument of 2. In this case, we don't see two lines of output. We only see the return value of 13. And it turns out that Python, once it encounters a return statement, it will immediately return that value and exit from that function. So we never get to that print statement. And this is why typically return statements are the last statement in a function. All the functions we've considered so far have taken a single argument or parameter as an input and returned a single value. In the next video we'll consider having multiple arguments and returning multiple values.